What's up, guys? It's been a really long time since we've done a video like this, like a really, really long time. It's also been a very long time that I've been keeping a little bit of a secret from some of you, unless you've been following me on Instagram. Uh, let me let me go show you. I got a new truck. Wow, it is incredibly bright. Uh, it's not exactly super new anymore. It's a 2022, which I bought new off the lot. It is a 2022 Colorado ZR2 Bison. AEV or American Expedition Vehicles takes it and puts all their parts on it and makes it super nice and like basically turnkey overland rig. I mean, you need a couple of things, but off the lot, it comes with a steel front bumper, a whole slew of skid plates up underneath. You got a three inch lift because it's a ZR2. You've got the DSSV shocks because it's a ZR2. These huge fender flares, uh, 32s, tube rear bumper, it's also steel. You got a winch mount already, all sorts of cool stuff. But the truck is not exactly what we're talking about today. I will do a video on the truck soon enough, I promise, but I'm not quite ready. What we're actually doing today is we're going camping. I'll show you why. This thing, this is the Blue Eddy AC 180. It is a beefcake of a battery, and we're gonna go kind of push it to its limits in the woods. So I got a video to edit and some other stuff to take care of today. We're gonna do it all off this battery. Which also, I should say, thank you to Blue Eddy for sponsoring this video. With that out of the way, let's do the damn thing. It just occurred to me how long it's been since I have been on a solo camping trip or, or even really just filmed a video by myself. It's been a while, but more so for the, the solo camping. This is something I used to do probably once or twice a month and I loved it and I miss it. But then I had kids and I, I haven't done this in three years. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's quick, it's short, it's not that much, but it's, it's a nice change of pace. For sure. First order of business, however, is I've got to find some bug spray because these mosquitoes are already eating me alive. Handle it. And the bug spray is all the way against the cab in the bed, so let's do it. So this trip is for a number of reasons. Uh, it's for me. I needed some getaway time. It's not much. I really wish I were out here for like three or four days. I really wish I were in the mountains, but I'm not. Um, but I've been sick two times in the last three weeks. My family has been sick for the last five weeks. It's not just been sickness. Like my son got an ear infection, ruptured eardrum. My daughter's like been through hell and back and... I just need a moment to decompress, just a slight moment. This trip is also to kind of iron out some more kinks. So this is not the first time I've come out with a truck. I took it to Georgia Bushcraft and didn't film anything. I just went for me. I wanted to go to an event where I didn't have to have a camera. So I just went, I returned the trailer and it was just going out for the first time in this thing. The setup's not perfect, right? I got these Milwaukee boxes. These are Milwaukee packouts, and I knew they weren't perfect because I took these on the trip to Georgia Bushcraft where I broke down in the mini truck. And it's a good setup because with this setup, it literally takes me like 20 minutes to get ready to go on a trip. I have to fill a jug of water, get all of these in the bed of the truck, and charge a battery and load the refrigerator. It's really, really simple to get out here. And then my fire pit. But the third reason I'm out here is to test this thing, this big battery from Blue Eddy, the AC-180, and to see just how things would be if I were to be on the road for a week or two weeks or a month or two months even, if I could get by with this current setup. And I think I can. I think it will do exceptionally well. So it's not just the refrigerator that's gonna tax that battery. Uh, I wasn't planning on these clouds, so this actually might be a much better test of this thing than I was expecting, but obviously you gotta keep our food and drinks cold. I have a video to edit, and that is hell on a computer battery. Gotta keep the camera charged here too. 
I brought my Steam Deck to play some video games just because I'm addicted to a few games right now and I wanted to. If I'm out here and not chasing kids around, I might as well enjoy myself just a little bit. But I'm also changing things up. Typically when I come out here and camp, whether it's Georgia Bushcraft or wherever, even backpacking, I'm using either isobutane or propane to cook. But I brought an electric griddle because why not? I love flat top cooking and I kind of hate pots and pans. So I figured if I've got this thing and it can handle it, let's let's try some electric griddle cooking while camping. All right, let's talk about this Blue Eddy for a second, the AC180. It's a LiFePo 4 battery and it can handle up to 1800 watts. The capacity is 1152 watt hours. That's approximately 36 amp hours. And that means you got a really high capacity for the size of this thing, and you can run some seriously large appliances off of it. TVs, refrigerators, not even just DC refrigerators, but an AC refrigerator if you need to. Uh, and it's extremely efficient. I believe the efficiency that I was reading is 85% efficient for the inverter. That's impressive as well. Uh, and it has a power lifting mode. 1800 watts is its like continuous rating. But for its powerlifting mode, that's 2,700 watts. So if something that surges really hard when it kicks on, this can still handle that, which is really nice. And also it has a UPS function. So uninterruptible power supply. All of that is pretty cool. But my favorite thing about it, let, let me show you. My favorite thing about this power supply is this input, this DC input, and this input, the AC input. On all of my other power banks that I use when I typically come out here, they have a brick and a proprietary input. So if you lose that charging cable, you gotta buy another one. This one is housed all inside and you have a standard plug on this thing. And one of the big complaints about these big power supplies is that they take forever to charge. But this one through this AC input can handle 1400 watts of input. So you can charge this thing super, super fast. You can get 80% of a charge. So 80% state of charge in 45 minutes. 45 minutes on this giant battery that's insane it's honestly kind of unbelievable even when you're watching it happen in front of your eyes because this battery is so large i was saying when we were at the office earlier i brought it inside and it was at 69 percent charge i plugged it in 12 minutes later it was full maybe it was 15 i don't know i didn't time it exactly but i did watch the clock a little bit it was kind of unbelievable when it happened and this input your DC input, which I have hooked up to a solar panel right now, can handle 500 watts. So this is a 120 watt solar panel. We're charging it up 100 watts right now. However, if you're using a 500 watt solar panel, you can charge this battery fully in just three hours with nothing but the sun, which is also impressive. And it does that at a maximum sound output of like 40 decibels. And the weight on this thing, because of all of that, it's kind of hefty, but it's 38 pounds. And then in addition to all of that, we have an app. So you can see what's going on. Even if you've got this thing kind of tucked away in a place that's hard to reach, you can see what's going on. You can see the state of the charge, which right now is at 95%. It's actually going up, which is neat. Uh, input right now is 102 watts. Output to my camera batteries is eight watts. You can turn on and off the whole thing. You can turn on DC or AC, turn them off. And that's it. It's super handy to have this available. It uses Bluetooth to communicate. And uh, yeah, the app makes it super nice. So you can see these things remotely. I was actually running into issues with the refrigerator turning off on me when I did not want it to turn off. And that was because I didn't realize eco mode was on. It says eco mode right there. So it's not the easiest to see, but if I push this button, you can make eco mode go on and off because I've entered the settings mode. With the technical stuff out of the way, you're probably wondering if I'm building this rig out, which clearly I am, and I'm actually following through with it this time, you're probably wondering why something like this, a power supply that's portable versus just a dual battery setup, because a dual battery setup makes a lot of sense, a lot of sense. Uh, but it basically comes down to the fact that I'm not Talon and Mike. <laughs> I wish I were. I wish I were cool like Talon and Mike. Uh, they have dedicated trail rigs and travel rigs, and I'm, I don't. I'm an EDC guy. I live on the East Coast. There's not a whole lot of trails. There's URE, and that's pretty much it. I mean, there's some other stuff, but not a whole lot here, especially not compared to out West. 
and I got two kids, two businesses. I don't end up going out a ton. I want to go out more. Me doing this is kind of my way of getting into that. But uh, the fact of the matter is I need a truck with a bed on it. And my mini truck's broken still. And I wanted something that was adaptable, something that I can daily drive, haul my kids around in, go on long road trips and not break down in, and just be able to go camping on a whim. I literally packed last night in about 20 minutes. Would I like something more permanent? Sure, but I also need a daily driver that's not inconvenient when I need to run to Lowe's and pick up lumber or anything else that requires a truck bed. So for me, this makes a whole lot more sense. You got four USBs, 100 watt USB-C, that is killer for me because that means it can charge my MacBook while I'm editing and that is next on the list. We got a video to edit. It's hot though. I got something for that. Oh yeah, yeah that didn't, that, it's not powerful enough to make that sound but that is what I'm talking about. Ah, uh, that's going to feel really good tonight. gonna kick in oh we went the hundred and some watts because the refrigerator just kicked on watch let's let's go back for a sec without this plugged in it's gonna show us 10 hours 8 9 8.9 might drop even lower 8.7 hours uh, obviously the refrigerator is not running constantly but this is a huge draw on this battery so we would have you know I, I'd say about 12 hours because of the cycling of the refrigerator if I wasn't running solar right now. And I need to last more than 12 hours right now because I'll be out here for another like 16 plus hours. So just plugging in this solar panel, we jumped this up to 60 some watts, we doubled our time remaining, and then when the refrigerator cycles off, we will have like 40, 50 hours remaining on here, which which is quite nice. So. While I would like to test all of this stuff without just constantly running solar, I wouldn't be able to make my trip and keep my meat and other food cold for the entire duration of this trip if I weren't running solar. I, I just edited for like a whole 10 minutes, but it's the perfect time to go fishing, and there's a pond right here. So uh, I got my little fishing kit. I didn't really bring a rod, but I have a little hand reel. I'm going to go fish for j j just like two minutes-ish. <laughs> get to fish anymore there we go baby it was what four or five casts i'm down for it so i caught one more fish two fish is better than no fish and i am so happy i got to fish while out here i wasn't planning on it but i, I just remembered that i had that little fishing kit in the truck and uh yeah so worth it to just go grab it and toss a few hooks in and see what would happen. But now it's time for dinner. So just a quick update on where we're at with the battery. We're at 94%. That's good. Now is when the testing begins because we're basically out of daylight, right? Well, we still have daylight, but the sun is behind the trees. We're not really getting direct sunlight anymore. And that's about as much as we're going to see. Maybe four to six amps. And I think that sucker over there that electric griddle is gonna draw quite a bit of power. I don't know what yet, I don't know what kind of wattage, but we're gonna be running the inverter and dinner might take 
30 minutes to cook. So let's find out. <laughs> this shows you how much leveling I did with the truck. There's not really a flat spot out here at all. Like this is going to make it look way more level and flat than it is. But even with it right here on this table, that cord barely reaches and keeps pulling the, the griddle back. So barely reaches. We made it. But now this just has to hang because it won't sit on top. It just wants to slide off. Hey, let's, uh, let's plug it in and turn it on. And let's see what kind of power it's drawing. Let's turn it all the way up. 400 degrees. Oh, you hear it kick on. Oh yeah, uh, 1400 watts. So we're gonna have to cook dinner pretty fast. <laughs> that is 0.7 hours. Oh crap, it's fine, this is fine. I may have underestimated the uh, power draw on an electric griddle. We'll see what we can do. <laughs> so this is what I brought for dinner. I have a one pound New York strip manager special. Oh yeah. Uh, I was going to just grill up a jalapeno. I think I'm still going to do that. And then I was going to do some mushrooms and onions. I think I'm going to skip the mushrooms and onions because the onion is going to take quite a long time. And it's kind of like this or this, and I'm going to get more nutrition out of a sweet potato sautéed than I am onions and mushrooms. So this is dinner, I believe. I may not do that. I don't know. Yikes, it's really going down fast, but I think we're going to make it. It's just, uh, whew. it's using up some, some juice. It's going down fast. You can sit here and watch it go down. We're only going to have about seven minutes on the steak, and hopefully the sweet potatoes will be done around the same time, but I, I don't know about that. Just killed AC power. We're gonna let these finish off on residual heat. We drag them through some of this over here from the stake. Used up 40% of battery in about, so these were on for a couple minutes more than that. I cooked the steak for seven minutes. I'd say about 10 minutes. 10 minutes we used 40%. And that's because this thing uses almost 1500 watts. So it can handle it which is the point, but not a lot of longevity because you're using so much power. So uh, that's exactly why I ran solar as long as, as I did. Uh, at first I was like, I feel like I'm cheating because I'm using this battery and I'm running the refrigerator on it, but I'm also like offsetting all of that juice with solar. But that's a good thing because that griddle, I, I knew the griddle was probably gonna use a lot of wattage, but I did not realize it was gonna be 1500 watts. 
I mean, it was consistently like 1480 or so. Uh, so in the 10 minutes, it used almost half of my capacity. Um, that should be plenty to get us through the night with the refrigerator, I think. The good news is most of what's like really, truly perishable, I just cooked, like the steak. There's another steak in there. I, I'm not really worried about losing it. It came from the freezer and whatever. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I didn't expect that. Um, but we have dinner and this steak looks amazing. Look at this. Just look at that sear. And just to show you where we're at, 59%. So while the refrigerator is running, if it were to run continuously, we would have eight and a half hours roughly. Uh, it's not gonna run continuously, but if it were, uh, we'll, we'll probably have about 16 or so hours right now. Okay, just cut off. Let's see where it goes. Just charging camera batteries. Uh, it says 51 hours. So I would probably split the difference between that. So let, we'll just say 20 hours, but I got some other stuffs to charge. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And... A mm. little more crunchy than I'd like on the sweet potatoes, but... Really close to perfect, honestly. It just still tastes great, but just a little crunch to them. Man, I couldn't finish that. I had, like, half... Which is probably all I should have eaten, but, man, as soon as I finished cooking, I lost my appetite. Not sure why. I'm still getting over whatever virus I had, some adenovirus that I've had twice in the last month, and it's done some weird things to my appetite in regards to this Blue Eddy and cooking with a griddle on it. I wouldn't recommend, only because anything that's going to have to generate that amount of heat and sustain it for 10 plus minutes is going to draw a ton of power. And if I were, even if I were running that solar panel, which is 120 watts, it really wouldn't have slowed that down at all. Uh, it made it, and theoretically we should make it to morning just fine. But, uh, man, I just got really tired and zapped, so I may be turning in early and editing tomorrow. Maybe. Not sure yet. Well, that was a huge bummer. Uh, I was lighting a fire, put the fire pit out, and had fortunately a moment of clarity and just looked down, noticed the embers falling through the fire pit and realized I'm in a giant field of dead grass because somebody bush hogged this a couple days ago or maybe a week ago, and it was like waist high. So tons of dead grass and... uh yeah, probably better to not burn down the whole field, which sucks because I wanted a fire and because I don't have one, there are bugs everywhere, tons of bugs. And if I open my laptop, they're just going to dive bomb the screen. So uh, I'll go up there for a little bit and then probably just going to pass out a little early without a fire that blows. Oh, well, uh, see you guys in the morning. So it's uh, 7.30 in the morning. And I woke up to realize my absolute and total big brain moment last night. You guys remember yesterday when I was explaining the eco function? Yeah, so I forgot to turn it off. So last night when it got cooler, it means that the refrigerator doesn't cycle on as much because it's maintaining its temperature a little bit better, which means that after a certain amount of time, the battery cuts off because it doesn't detect a draw. Oops, it really didn't get that warm in the refrigerator. So I had it plugged in or, or turned the power station back on for about probably like two minutes now. And where we were at when I first woke up was at 47%. So not that different. I do have the solar plugged back in, but as you can see, the sun's not up over the tree line yet. But uh, yeah, we're good. Home free, 46%. That'll cycle off in just a second. 
because it's getting close to the 37 degrees that it's set at. And then the solar will kick in as soon as the sun there comes up over these trees. So that'll be a while. It's literally been maybe a minute since I turned the camera off. This is down to 36 now. So that draw really was not bad having to get the, the refrigerator back down, but yeah. As you can see, zero draw, but I do need to charge some more camera batteries, so... There we go. So the only thing left that I need to do while I'm out here and get done today is get this video edited. So naturally, I'm going to go fishing right now. <laughs> well, it's a good time. I'll be back, like two minutes. That's it, yeah. <laughs> Still editing, almost done, uh, but this is why I almost always have like a 15 foot USB-C cable because you can plug in pretty much anywhere as long as you can reach your hand in there and ta-da, here plugged up. And just to show you where we're at, 44%, it's about 940. This is going to take its toll, this is about 100 watts, that's just the laptop and these camera batteries charging five and a half hours though we'll be fine it will kick up to like probably 150 watts when the refrigerator kicks on but it has not been cycling very much so so the video is mostly done i have to go back to the office because i forgot my hard drive where all the other footage is stored and i need that so i would say video is 99 percent done it's been on charge for like 20 minutes and i've gained probably about 15 20 percent battery and exchanged that for about 4% battery on this thing while also managing this and the, the refrigerator cycled one or two times. So in all, uh, this thing has really pulled its weight and excelled, uh, especially considering the griddle situation. Like, uh, I did not expect the draw to be that high, but even though it was, it still managed to power the griddle and get us through today with roughly 40% charge left. Even though I have been, you know, supplementing with solar, Today, the solar hasn't really exceeded like maybe 12 watts, 20 watts, maybe. So it's really not that much. It's just make sure that uh, my food doesn't spoil. <laughs> but yeah, this thing has been great. If you want to check out the Blue Eddy AC180 yourself, hit the link in the description down below. And once again, I want to thank Blue Eddy for sponsoring the video. Um, this thing is going to be part of my camping setup. This truck build is going to incorporate this thing moving forward. Uh, again, I don't really want to go dedicated secondary battery setup in this yet because this is not the final stage of this truck again i'm going to tell you more about the truck in a future video it won't be that long i promise but the what you see here is a temporary solution i have plans that do not incorporate this rack or this tent so all that's to say i don't want a permanent battery solution right now i want something that i can put in the truck and use it and then take it out of the truck easily so yeah, this thing is gonna be part of the build. That's it. So we're gonna go pack up. I got a little bit of packing up to do. I'm gonna put the wrap on that video over there and yeah, that's it for now. I'll see you guys actually at Blade Show today. Yeah, I'll see you there. Bye guys.